I don't really worry about fire. We have one smoke detector, and the fire department is just up the street from me. My friends used to play fire, and I did too, but we didn't think anything bad could happen. You know, you hear about fires like this, and it's really frightening. But I don't smoke. None of my friends do. It just couldn't happen to me. It scares me to think of what happened to that house. It's a miracle those people came out alive. You know, the same thing could have happened to me. This faulty fireplace caused a fire that taught a lesson to Larry, Pauline, and Kevin Henry. In less than five minutes, their home of 23 years was destroyed. Like most of us, the Henrys thought fire couldn't happen to them. They were wrong. It did happen to them. It could happen to you. When the fire erupted at four o'clock in the morning, the Henrys fled into the street where they watched helplessly as the interior of their home was gutted. Flames, heat, and smoke destroyed everything. The fire was devastating, but miraculously, the Henrys escaped unharmed to tell their story. Today, they are able to turn their misfortune into a unique educational experience called Operation Open House. Working in cooperation with their fire department and community groups, the Henrys have opened their home to public viewing. The people in this community are getting a graphic first-hand look at what happens when fire strikes. But Operation Open House is more than just a tour of a burned-out home. It's also a chance for the public to learn important fire safety lessons from experts. Speakers from the fire department, the Burn Foundation, and an insurance company turned out to answer questions and offer advice. The gutted home and cost and manpower statistics provide graphic demonstrations of the devastating effects of fire. However, the most effective speakers for Operation Open House are the Henrys themselves. Kevin Henry discovered the fire. Fire department emergency. Yes, there's a fire, quick! I can't understand you, what? We're on a fire. We're at 613 Tuck. Is this... Get out! Get out! Would you visit the house or is it outside? The house! Okay, we'll be right there, okay? Okay. That was me that dialed 911. I was sleeping here when I woke up at 4 in the morning and smelled smoke. I put the sheet over my face and I was just going to go back to sleep until I heard the loud popping noise and I went to see what was going on. I then came out of my bedroom. My parents were sleeping down this hall in their bedroom. I then came down this hall to the living room. I saw a thick layer of smoke in the living room, and there was a loud popping noise coming from the closet. I then yelled to my parents to get out. I then came to the kitchen and called the fire department. I couldn't see, but I dialed 911 by touch. Then my parents ran out the front door to escape, which allowed fresh air to rush in and caused a huge explosion, which I hear is common in fires like this. I know now that I should have gone to the neighbors to call the fire department because I was almost caught in that blast. Larry Henry, Kevin's father, fields questions from the crowd. Mr. Henry, why are you having this open house? To show people exactly how devastating a fire can be. Did you believe your house was fire safe? Yes, sir, I did. I had a smoke detector. 
The addition of my house was built to code, but that wasn't enough. You know, it isn't easy to relive a fire like this, but if someone can learn something about fire safety through our story, it's well worth it. The Henry family was lucky to get out of their house alive. The fire started here in a faulty fireplace, spread into the walls, and it jumped up into the attic. The Henrys didn't know it at the time, but they were sleeping under a smoldering inferno. Inferno is an apt way to describe what happened. At the height of the fire, the temperature was estimated to be well over 1,200 degrees. This deep char is the effect of that intense heat. It was hot enough to melt the aluminum frames on the rear windows. Hot enough to melt glass. Along with the heat and flames, there was smoke. By the time the Henrys escaped, the smoke level in the house was down to three feet from the floor. Smoke and toxic gases can be more deadly than flames. When Kevin discovered the fire, he made some near fatal mistakes. First, he walked upright into a smoke-filled room. Smoke fills the room from the top down. The cooler, fresher air is nearer to the floor. Secondly, the emergency call to the fire department was made from within the home. He should have made it from a neighbor's house. Once outside, stay outside. From the time the fire was discovered to total devastation was about five minutes. The Henrys had a working smoke detector installed in the proper spot, the hallway that covered the two front bedrooms, the two bathrooms, and the rear bedroom. But it wasn't enough. Ideally, every room in the house should have a smoke detector. Along with smoke detectors, every family should have a home escape plan and should practice home fire drills. As illustrated here, closed doors will slow the spread of fire. Every fire is different. There are some basic points you should all remember. You should stay low and crawl to avoid smoke. Don't call from your own phone. Know your local emergency number. And once outside, stay outside. Pauline Henry describes her experience in personal terms. You know, this was my favorite room in the house. And over here was the refrigerator. You know, the heat must have been so intense that it baked a can of biscuits that I had in there. And um, it just broke them open and they browned on top just like, you know, that you take them out and eat them. They were that pretty and perfect. And... Um, here is the, um, an antique lamp that was over 100 years old. It was a really a prized possession. Um, now, would you like to uh, see my, uh, in the dining room, where I had the collection of portrait plates that I had also collected for several years. This used to be our china cupboard, where I kept a collection of antique portrait plates and a collection of uh, uh, porcelain figurines I had collected over the years. Um, and here is our family room where we uh, spent most of our time. And uh, in that corner was our television set. And over here in this uh, area was our uh, couch where Kevin and his dad would sit and watch television and wrestle around and play and, and have a lot of fun. Um, you know, we have... Uh, lost a lot of personal and uh, material things in this fire. But uh, the most important thing is that the three of us got out alive. And um, it has took a toll on all three of us. I have to know uh, all the time where my family is. Um, I worry about them, uh, afraid something will happen, you know, when uh, we're not all together. Um, and noise uh, makes us all nervous. Um, and it's just, um, uh, it's just a tragedy that, um, uh, it's just something that we'll just never forget. It'll just be with us um, all, all the time. There's something that will, uh, reminds us of, of what we've gone through. To make Operation Open House as much an educational experience as possible, information is presented on how to prevent fires, what to do in case of fire, and what to do after a fire. 
In addition to properly installing and maintaining a smoke detector in your home, you and your husband may want to consider installing a fire sprinkler system. The main advantage for this is that it extinguishes and contains a fire in the area of origin so it does not spread throughout the house. If you have any more questions about it, you can contact the local fire department. You mean I need more than one of these in my home? Yes, you should have a smoke detector installed in every sleeping area and joining hallway. Oh, are they expensive? No, they're not. Sounds great. Do you know what to do when your clothes catch on fire? Yes, you stop, drop, and roll. That's great. How about taking this home? Okay. okay. Do you know what to do if you were to get burned? No, what would you do? want you to cool it with cool water for 20 minutes. And don't use ice, okay? Can I okay. put this on you? Yeah. It's a good reminder. Cool it. Now, one of the things that you should remember that's very important is never underinsure your home. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish just to save yourself a few dollars. And it is very important for you to keep a photo or video record of your valuables in case of a claim. The Henrys will rebuild their home and will recover from their misfortune. We got out alive, but about 6,000 people a year don't. We hope and pray that through this operation, Open House, you won't be one of them. What happened to me was I was burned in a house fire almost five years ago. It was a two-story house. There was no way of escaping because there were bars in the lower floor windows and there was no smoke detectors. If I had known about an open house like this before I got burned, my accident might not have happened. It's very important that you get out and stay out. That's the number one rule that I won't forget. I'm going home and check the fireplace and the fire screen to make sure that everything is okay. Stop, drop, and roll if your clothes catch on fire. Even if you're careful, fire is very dangerous. It's important for me to plan the safest and quickest way to get out of the house in a hurry in case of a fire, and also the nights my granddaughter spends with me, I need to plan how to get her out. Fire sprinklers are a good idea. What's a little water damage compared to losing your life? I believed I was safe with just one smoke detector. But I have a big house, just like the Henrys. For my own peace of mind, I'm going to install at least one more smoke detector. I thought a fire couldn't happen to me, but I was wrong. I learned today that it could. When I go home, I'm going to make certain that emergency telephone number is placed right above the telephone where every member of my family can see it. Thanks to Operation Open House, the people of this community have learned important lessons in fire safety. Remember what you have learned here. It could save your life.